Test it, test it. Can we get this on time? Test it, test it. Test it. Testing, testing. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Y'all know how we do it. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Um, one songwriter said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It's always an honor uh, and a privilege to be able to come before God and to hear him speak to us where we are. Uh, there's a lot going on, a lot of great things, too. Uh, for example, we got young people that are graduating. Amen. <laughs> That's always a blessing to look on Facebook and see so many kids that you saw that could barely walk. <laughs> and, and to see them walk across that stage and to um, get ready to go to the next level, the level in life, it's, it's amazing. And it just seemed like it's happening so fast. They were just babies yesterday. And now they're on their way to adulthood, uh, but life gets better. Um, and one thing that is very important, no matter how old you get, is that you're gonna always need God. Amen. You're gonna always need him. Uh, I cannot imagine uh, living life without knowing for sure that God is on my side. Uh, the scripture says, it is in him that we live, move, and have our very existence. And I know apart from him, the Bible says that we can do nothing. So um, sometimes life happens. Life happens to the best of us. But it's really not in about. It's really not about what happens to you. It's how you handle what happens. Um, God always gives us the fortitude, and He always gives us the resources that we need to get back up and to keep pushing. Uh, sometimes you just gotta fight through things um, and know that God will never leave you or forsake you. Amen. 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 So uh, I'm going to go ahead and start with a word of prayer, and then we're going to talk about um, what is grace. That's been uh, something that has been on my heart here lately, and the more, and the older I get, the more I understand what grace is. Um, and we'll talk about that here in just a moment. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your unmerited favor. We thank you for grace today. We thank you for waking us up and clothing us in our right mind. We thank you for speaking to us where we are. Uh, we thank you for uh, taking us through life's transitions and reminding us that I would never leave you or forsake you. We thank you for the love and the compassion that you've given to us. We thank you for walking with us daily. We know that apart from you, we can do nothing. We appreciate who you are to us. We thank you for where we are in life. Uh, we know that life uh, happens in phases. And sometimes we have unfamiliar seasons. We have seasons that we don't really like that much. But we also understand that when we're in those seasons, you're just preparing us for a better one. So I pray that you would help us to be better stewards of where we are, the time that you've allotted us. We pray that you will continue to Cover us in your grace and your mercy. Remind us to never get fixed on where we are and who we're dealing with. Always look beyond that. Let us look to the hills from which comes our help because we truly know that our help comes from you. We thank you for a relationship with you. We thank you that this journey is not simply about religion, but it's about relationship. And when we have a relationship with you, God, we know that it's intimate we know uh, that in that relationship, uh, it is a two-way relationship. You understand us and you teach us more and more about you. And the more we learn about you, the more we understand who we are. And we also come to you today asking for forgiveness because we know that somewhere down the road, somewhere in this journey, we have come short of the glory of God. We have sinned. We have missed the mark. But we continue to confess our sins and the Bible says that you are faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Create within us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. And we pray also, God, that you will continue to give us that peace that surpasses all understanding. 
Because no matter where we are in life, nothing can compare to just having peace in our minds and peace in our hearts. I pray, God, that once we experience that peace, that we will never go back to anything that will cause us anything less than what you have shown us. We live every day with expectancy, Lord. We're looking to you. We're depending on you. We're leaning on you because we know, Lord, that we cannot do this on our own. We thank you once again for the blood of your son, Jesus, his sacrifice. We thank you for his death, burial, and his resurrection. We thank you that he saved us, that he called us into fellowship with him. And we are eternally grateful to you for that. I pray that you continue to watch over our young people, that you will keep their eyes fixed on you, and that you would remind them that you love them with the unconditional love and every other love need to be compared to yours because nobody can do us like you can. And so we love you. We thank you for all you've done and all that you're going to do. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray for health. We pray for strength. We pray for those who may be sick, homebound. We pray for those that are at the funeral home right now making arrangements for a loved one. So we say once again, it is a blessing to be on top of the ground and the ground not on top of us. Keep us, Lord, and we'll be careful to give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 So I want you to turn with me to um, Ephesians chapter 2. As a matter of fact, turn to Mark, the gospel of Mark. And uh, we'll look at verses, chapter 1, verses 40 through 45. Mark chapter 1, verses 40 through 45. Mark chapter 1, verses 40 through 45. The word of God reads as follows. And a leper came to Jesus, beseeching him and falling on his knees before him and saying, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Moved with compassion, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately, the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. And he sternly warned him and immediately sent him away. And he said to him, see that you say nothing to anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded as a testimony to them. But he went out and began to proclaim it freely and spreading the news around to such an extent that Jesus could no longer publicly enter a city, but stayed out in unpopulated areas. And they were coming to him from everywhere. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. This morning I want to uh, talk to you from this simple subject. What it looks like to show grace to others. What it looks like to show grace to others. First I want to start by defining what grace is. We hear it a lot. Um, this term has definitely been on my heart for the past couple of weeks that I can remember when I first heard the word grace I thought I understood it but I don't think we really understand grace until you start living by it Amen. when you realize that um, if it had not been for the Lord on your side when you start looking back over your life and you see how you and I got ourselves in situations that only God could get us out of um, I believe that a person truly understands grace uh, when they actually start walking in it and experiencing God on that type of level. But let me start by defining to you what grace is. Grace is defined as the Christian belief, uh, unmerited favor. Uh, we, we hear favor a lot, that God favors me. And I believe to an extent, God favors all of us because we truly have not received what we truly deserve. Amen? Amen. We've, we've, we've done some things. We've had some experiences. And a lot of things that we've gone through are things that we actually got ourselves in. Uh, and it was the grace of God that brought us out. Can you imagine living without the grace of God? Mm -hmm. 
Can you imagine what your life would be like and where you would be right now if God had never extended his grace to you? Can, can you imagine if God didn't love us enough to give his only begotten son as a ransom for us to be the propitiation, to, to stand between us and God and to give us that bridge to actually come to God? Uh, without grace, our lives just would not be the same. Grace is also defined as to honor uh, or to credit to something uh, by someone's presence. The word unmerited favor means we simply just don't deserve it. Hmm. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I can just be riding in my car and I think about where I could be. And I think about all the mess that I got myself into, that God literally showed up and pulled me out of. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not talking about I'm not talking about my my holiest days. Y'all know we have those holy days when you feel like you ain't your, your feet ain't even touching the ground. I'm, I'm I'm not talking about those days, but I, I'm actually talking about those days when. You get up, your feet not touching the ground, and you begin to think over your life about how good God has been to you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes your face just tears up. Your arms fly up. I've had times where I've actually had to pull over because I begin to think about where I would be. Yes, you know what I'm talking yes, about. Yes, I do. Yes. <laughs> Thinking about all the, all the things that I... Have you ever just tried to tear up your life? Huh. I'm talking about you've done so much stuff to get yourself in a jam. And the people that you were expecting, listen to me, to come to your rescue were nowhere to be found. But the one that mattered the most always showed up. There's never been a time in your life that you didn't make it. Because if it was a time, you wouldn't be here now. You have won 100% of every battle you've ever entered. And it did not kill you. And when I began to think about where God has brought me from and what he pulled me out of, last, last Sunday we talked about being prayerful and not petty. When you really think about it yeah. and all that you've been through and all the things that he pulled you out, you don't have time to be petty. Nope. I ought to be praising God right now for what he's done in my life. Because, because if the truth be told, God has came to my rescue yeah. in circumstances that nobody knows about. Amen. Yeah. Yes. See, that's, that's the stuff that we really don't want. I can't, I can't tell you yeah. about all the details and all the things that happened, but I know. Yes. Yeah. And when you know what you know, yeah. that you know. Yeah. You, you, you have the experience. You saw a front row seat, yeah. and you yeah. took yourself to the drama, and God pulled you out of it. And it's not because you and I deserved it, but grace. You don't, you don't really understand what grace is. As saved as you are, you still need grace. Yes. As hard as you fight to get it right, you try to cross every T, you try to dot every I, you try to pray when you get up, but still you got to go to work. And sometimes you don't always say what you ought to say when people rub you the wrong way. Come on, some you, come, you know how people try to play you too close. You play me too close. I'm, I'm saved and I love the Lord, but you playing me too close today. And sometimes you feel the need to put people in their place. I feel the need to set the record straight. I need to show them because if I don't show them one time, they're going to keep trying to play me. So I got to let them know at least once. I know I ain't the only one. Got to let them know. I'm saved. I'm sanctified. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. But you crossing. Okay. Because God is still working on me. I'm a work in progress. Turn your name say, I'm a work in progress. I'm a work in progress. Now say it like you mean to say, I'm a work in progress for real. God is working on me. 
Sometimes I still get an attitude. Uh, sometimes I stay in my feelings longer than I need to. Sometimes I don't return folk calls that I shouldn't be calling back. Sometimes I don't want to fix stuff that's broken. Sometimes I just don't want to be, yeah, bothered. But with all my flaws and all of my issues and all of my downfalls and all of this stuff that's going on with me, God ain't, God ain't nowhere having a conversation about me to nobody else. God is still fixing me. What God does because his grace is extended to us, he put us on the potter's wheel and he begins, y'all know how it works. He begins to spin it and take that stuff out. Yeah, they still got that attitude. Let me work on that a little bit. Because God will allow people to get under your skin just to show you what's wrong with you. Lord, I didn't know I still struggle with that. <laughs> I've been praying about it for years. I even went to the altar multiple times, and I, I know I gave it to the Lord, Mama. I know I gave this attitude to the Lord, but some kind of way it keeps showing up. <laughs> And I know he didn't give it back to me. Maybe I took it back. Because, you know, sometimes we like to have an attitude. Sometimes we like to have our little flaws. And sometimes we like the things about us that ain't always right. I like that part of me sometimes. I know I don't, I don't deserve this relationship. That I have with the creator of heaven and earth. Yeah. I, I know I don't deserve this love. I don't deserve all of these blessings that he's bestowing upon my life. You messed up yesterday and he's blessing you again today. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. you messed up day before yesterday. You messed up last week and yes. some kind of way God still yes. blessing you. Yes. And so when you start adding up the math and you start putting everything in perspective, you realize, Lord, it ain't me that's doing this. You're not doing the things that you do for me because I'm good. You're doing all of these things for me because you're good. You, 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 who you are, who you are, God is intrinsically good. The Bible says that there is no darkness in him at all. He is intrinsically loved. That means through and through, he's a loving God. Mm -hmm. He's an understanding God. And no matter what you're dealing with and what you're going through, God is still providing. Yes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's still sitting on the throne. It was the grace of God that allowed you to walk across that stage and, and get your diploma. It was the grace of God that put you in a position to be the mother that you are to your children. It was the grace of God that allowed you to raise four, being a single mother. It was the grace of God that stopped you from taking yourself out when you didn't even think that you were fit to live. It was the grace of God that kept you. Even when you didn't want to be kept, it was, it was his grace that showed you that you're still lovable. Even when you didn't feel that you could be loved, it was his grace. It was his grace. Turn your name. It, it was his grace. Nothing but his grace. It's unmerited favor. And you know this is how people view it. I don't see why God is blessing them the way he's blessing them. I don't see why they keep attributing all of these things to God that they say he's doing for them. They don't understand grace. Because nobody is living so good and so right that they can afford to hold a conversation about what somebody else got wrong. Y'all ain't with me. I said nobody is living so good and so holy and so right and, and doing everything that the Bible tells them to do that they can put themselves in the judgment seat and judge somebody else's life all scrolling through their Facebook and scrolling through their Instagram and trying to come to some type of conclusion about people that you really don't even know when your whole life is in shambles. And so instead of trying to focus on what somebody else got wrong and what somebody else got right, you need to focus on what you're struggling with. You need, you need to focus on your own struggle because guess what? The same grace that God has given them is the same grace that he will extend to you if you come to him. 
At least when I'm when I fall or when I have fallen, I have sense enough to get up. You ain't gonna celebrate my fall too long. Amen. You might be sitting there, you're messed up. He's this, he's that. Yeah, he didn't get this right. He didn't get that right. Amen. Clap while you can, baby. Because guess what? I'm getting up. The Bible says that the righteous man falls seven times, but you know what? He's There's power in getting up. See, that's the thing that unbelievers don't understand. You can't, you can't celebrate a believer's downfall too long. Come on. Yeah, because because God is still teaching all of his children. And it's just like you're teaching a child to walk. You know, you grab them by their hand and you let them take baby steps. You know, they don't know what they're doing. They don't even know that they're going to walk yet. Because God is built, the parent is building the confidence. You know, and walking with them one step at a time. But at some point, you know what you do? You let their hand go and you let them take one or two steps knowing that they're going to fall. Huh? You know, you, and God does the same thing with us. He will walk with you. He will walk with you. He'll take steps with you. But sometimes he will let your hand go just so that you can fall to see if you're going to get back up. And you know, there's a certain type of confidence that you have when your parent is there. You know, like I've won a few fights because my dad was out there. Uh, <laughs> ran home fast as I could. I'm talking about booking up running. Man, I, I can recall this stuff like it was yesterday because, and it's just a perfect illustration. Y'all y'all know who I'm talking about. There's only one person that really ran me home. It was William, William Walker and his brothers. But well, it was a family. <laughs> Somebody in that family was always trying to fight. <laughs> they were some rough boys. Man, I didn't grow up being rough. I grew up building clubhouses and riding go-karts and... <laughs> Going to the basketball court, they moved in our neighborhood and they started beating everybody up. My God. Well, I became friends with them, so I thought, and well, you know, when they get mad at you, they threaten you. Man, he said, you're going to get me when that bus stop. Man, and all I can think about the whole ride on the bus. I, I, listen, I wanted the bus drive to go to some extra stops. <laughs> Rearrange your route because I ain't ready to get off on man yet. <laughs> man, he stopped and he opened that door. Man, I know my backpack hit about three or four people running off that bus. I got off that bus and I ran home because I've always been a fast runner. Man, I was sprinting and could nobody catch me. I won't let nobody catch me. You're not beating me up today. I'm running. <laughs> Man, I ran in that house so fast, I called my daddy. <laughs> and by the time my daddy came to the door with me, William Walker was stepping in the yard. 1910 Jefferson Street, I'll never forget. <laughs> and my daddy said, you going out here, and you getting ready to fight this boy. <laughs> you getting ready to fight. It's just, well, my point is there's a certain level of confidence that you have yeah. Yeah. when you got the right parent. Push you. And so I won that fight. Just to make a long story short, I won that fight. Me and William Walker never had any problems again. Amen. Now, it, it doesn't negate the fact that he could fight. He just didn't win that day. <laughs> Amen. Because I had the right person in my corner. And so there's a lot of stuff that you're going to go through in life. But when you begin to look at it and begin to look to the hills from which comes your help, you'll win battles that other folk are losing because you realize who's on your side. I don't know who came with you, but I know who I got with me and I'm looking up to him. He has all power. Y'all making me preach. Unmerited favor, grace is unmerited favor. It means um, it, it's unmerited favor that we don't deserve. Favor means he loves us despite our faults. In essence, when we are talking about grace, we're talking about showing people the goodness of, that God has shown to every last one of us. Now, if you know anything about me, my whole ministry, well, I say the last half of my ministry because I learned differently. Uh, you don't look down on people. I'm, I'm, I stand on that. Because as a leader and as a believer, period, 
You never stick your nose up in the air or look down on somebody that you feel is not on your level. Because really you ain't leveling up the way you think you are. You just ain't been around the right people. There's always somebody better than you. There's somebody who makes a little bit more money than you. There's somebody who's finer than you. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, there's somebody who's doing it bigger than you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You know, and what people have a tendency to do is to compare themselves to people that they feel that they're already doing better than. Yeah. Yeah. And it makes them feel superior and it makes them feel like they're winning. Mm -hmm. uh, but they, they have to understand that um, in a moment, everything that you have can be gone. Yes. Because the people that you're looking down on. Yeah. You never know that one day you might be looking up to. And so just because I'm in this predicament today, and y'all sitting over there clapping your hands and talking about what he don't have and talking about what she don't have and talking about well, how they used to be and talking about, yeah, you having a good time now, that's because you counted God out. Anytime you take God out of the equation, you're going to get it wrong. Y'all didn't hear me. I say, anytime you take God out of the equation, you trying to add it up with your finite mind, you're going to get the equation wrong. Because when God comes in, he makes a difference. He's the biggest difference in the situation altogether. And there's no situation that God steps in that he doesn't make better. Our problem is that we want to do it on our own. Sometimes I think I got this. Sometimes, Lord, you've already done enough. And if you do, you, you know, I don't need you to do anything else right now. Just sit back and take a rest. And God says, no, you need me for the stuff that you don't think you need me for. Yeah. Now, God, the Bible says, plus, I don't sleep. I don't sleep nor slumber. I'm always watching over you. There's stuff that I interfered in and moved out of your way that you don't even know I did. Because I never allowed it to get to you. Yeah. There are people who are praying for your demise. Yes. Yes. They want you to not make it so bad. Yes. They want you to throw the towel in yeah. so bad. They're yeah. sitting back and they're counting down yes. because they're ready for you to give up any sign of fatigue or any sign of discouragement. They say, we almost got them. And you know, they're sitting back there, but they don't understand the grace of God. Okay. That's because they don't understand God's grace. Yeah. Those are the, the type of people that God loves to upset. Those are the type of people that God will use you. He will use you as a trophy of his grace so they can see that anything is possible with me. Yeah, it is. God wants to use, just like all the people in the Bible, the man uh, who was born blind. God allowed him to be born blind on purpose so that he can give him his sight in front of people who didn't think it was possible. Mm -hmm. right. And so there will be times when God will allow you to go through stuff that's painful, stuff that you don't want to go through, just to pull you out of it. Because you, we always say, Lord, if you can use anybody, use me. That's what we sing and that's what we say and we, we always ask God to use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. And God says, okay. I've been, I've been looking for somebody to use. I'm glad that you are available. I want to use you for this. No, not that, Lord. No, 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 no. You, you can't. If you say, Lord, use me, you can't pick and choose what he uses you to do. Because however he uses you, it also comes with an extension of his grace. If God called you to it, he's going to bring you through it by his grace. Even if he wants to allow you to be sick in your body, to allow you to go through all of this stuff in the emergency room, you're in and out, just to heal you so that people can know that our God is still a healer. Now there are no signs that you were ever sick in the first place. Why? Because God is just that good. Grace. Let me move on. In the text, there's a man who's listed here. The Bible calls him a, a leprous man. There's a lot of leprous people in the Bible. There are a few things that we see going on with this man. We see a man with an issue that was too much for him to handle. Have you ever been there? Have you ever had so much on your plate that you thought you wouldn't be able to handle it? This man 
in the text. He was in a situation that his friends couldn't pull him out of. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you, you go through that. You're so used to being able to text your BFF and call these people to come and deliver you, but you called the wrong line. They can't help you. God will allow us at times to experience things that only he can pull us out of. Yes. And while we're going through that, you can call it training day. Because God is training you for something that's not there yet. David was being trained to be a king keeping sheep. Fighting wild beasts to protect them. Because God knew that at some point, these beasts that you're fighting are going to be equivalent to the people that you're going to be dealing with. And so I'm going to train you while they're over there celebrating and everybody jockeying for a position trying to be king. I'm going to train you. They're not even going to invite you to the table. But guess what? You're the only one got the qualities to be it. The thing is, you don't have to fight for a position ever. Amen. You don't have to downplay who you are to win favor from people. You don't have to compromise your integrity. You don't have to do any of those things because what God has for you is simply going to be yours in due season. When they were looking for a king of is the first king of Israel. All the David's brothers, they prepped and primed. I'm talking about that boy, that Doshe and Gabbana, Cologne. I'm talking about <laughs> they got on their royalty, that purple, fine linen. I'm talking about they looking good. We call them GQ, just for short. Man, litty lit. All of them coming in there. I'm talking about all the David's brothers coming to the table. Everybody going to be the king. And nobody think it's not going to be them. But there can only be one. And God has to give them the qualifications, the criteria. God has his own criteria. No matter how hard you try to be something that you're not, God has his own criteria. And his criteria is different from the pe people look at the external. God told the prophet Samuel that don't look at the exterior. God looks at the heart. Mm -hmm. And so all that prepping and priming and all that stuff they're doing, I'm talking about they fresh to death. Mm -hmm. Almost fresher than me. <laughs> <laughs> but that they, they was not it. You, you, you're not the one. The next one comes up, you're not the one. The God says he ain't it either. All them brothers, he's not it. He's not it. And can you imagine what happened to their Self-esteem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then they finally said, Jesse, uh, you got some more sons? Because God didn't pick none of them. <laughs> Can you imagine hearing God didn't pick you? Yeah. You got on your best and you ain't it. Because your heart ain't right. Mm -hmm. So that means that, that tells me that God is more concerned with your heart than he is with what you got on. Yes. It don't hurt to be to have a good heart and to be able to put it together now, you know. <laughs> but none of that stuff matters if you're evil. That's right. None of that stuff matters. If you look down on people, you get a little promotion and you dogging people on your job. You got people losing their job who have families and children to feed. You don't consider none of that. Your heart ain't right. You dressing the part, but you evil. And your time is ticking. You know, if you are a believer and you work under these type of circumstances, just chill. Yeah. Their time is running out. Okay. Because the Bible says pride goes before destruction 
and a haughty spirit before fall, they ain't going to last long. The Bible also says those who humble themselves, God will exalt. And those who exalt themselves, God will humble. That's the word. And then Romans 12 says, never pay back evil for evil to anyone. I ain't got to get you back. I don't need my link back. All I'm going to do is step back. And God, you hit me. I don't, I don't have to try to get even. I don't know who this is for. I don't know who this is for. Stop trying to get your lick back. Let me come in so, so my social media people can hear me. Stop trying to get your lick back. Because if you keep going back and forth with people, it'll never stop. But when you get out the way and leave room for the wrath of God, leave room for God to fight the battle, leave room for God to handle them, then there'll be no traces that you ever had anything to do with it. The Bible says, touch not my anointing and do my prophets no harm. That ain't just for preachers, y'all. If you are a child of God, they better keep their hands and their mouths off of you. Yes. Because I'm not, I'm not the one you got to be concerned about. Because I ain't going to bust a grape. I got too much to lose. If I get at you, baby, you had to really cross the line real bad. <laughs> real bad and real good. And you got gat. That, that That's the only way that you'll get me out of character. You got to really cross the line. Because I've seen God do too much for me to feel like I got to get my lick back. And so sometimes you got to tell your neighbor, slide out the way. Y'all just say it like you meant it. You're going to go back to work tomorrow and, and folk going to be trying to get you out of the character. Slide out the way. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Slide out the way. Because they're going to be waiting on you. Oh, they know today's Sunday. But they also know tomorrow is Monday. Oh, you got to come back to work, baby. You run into the church trying to get some help from God. God told me to just slide out the way. When I ran home, I thought that's what my daddy was going to tell me, slide out the way, but he made me fight. He made me fight, y'all. But as I've gotten older and just a little bit wiser, I know that it's okay to slide out the way. They're going to say, you weak, you scary, you this, you that. But guess what? I live to fight another day because I slid out the way. I got to prove nothing to nobody. Amen. Because my God is fighting all my battles. Yes. And he extends his grace every single day. Now I was talking about this leprous man, if I can ever get to him. <laughs> <laughs> he was in a predicament that his friends could not help him with. Mm -hmm. And another thing that didn't matter, his accomplishments. Sometimes, yeah, you got your, you got your um, PhD, you got your bachelor's, associates, doctorate, whatever, however many letters you got behind your name that makes you think you're something. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you got um, a key to the city. Okay, you've been recognized uh, by the city officials. Yeah, everybody's calling your name and you think you something. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah, they wrote you up in the newspaper. Congratulations. You fed the homeless. Good job. But sometimes you will find that you have accomplished a lot. And not even your accomplishments can get you out of what you're in. Okay. See, the problem with a lot of us is that we think that God owes us because we've done a lot for him. But what you have to understand is that if he never did another thing, he's already. Ooh, Lord have mercy, I'm getting feeling funny. 
if he never answers another prayer, if he never heals another sickness in your body, if he never does another thing for you and for me, he's already done enough. God fed you when you blew your rent money. He, he fed you when, when you got dressed to go to the all-black affair. <laughs> the all-white party. You go to every party. The pink party. <laughs> Cold note reunion. I should have wanted to go, but I can't go. Come back in the day, I was a whole noter. Couldn't go. D. Scott, I couldn't go. But happy birthday. But the, the thing about God, Lord have mercy, is that his grace is always extended to his people. This man had a condition that he could not help. I want you to look at the text right here. I want to show you something. Look at verse 40. The leper man, he came to Jesus. The leprous man came to Jesus. That's verse 40. In Mark chapter 1. The leprous man, he came to Jesus. Y'all see it? He came to Jesus. That's good, ain't it? Yeah. Most people in this man's position... They want what Jesus has to offer, but are too afraid to come to him. What condition is so bad that you ain't good enough to come to God? What people in this world are not qualified to be a recipient of God's grace? Because you know certain people, they can't come to church. Certain people, they can't come to God. Everybody else can come to them, but not them. Why they can't come to God? They need help too. And you've been getting help for years and you still ain't. Okay, Pastor. <laughs> you, you've been coming to church since childhood. They just now learning about God and the church already about to run them out. Mm -hmm. Religious people. Because you got to meet a certain criteria. And how you going to put a criteria on me that you don't meet? Y'all ain't talking. Y'all thought I came to play today? I didn't come to play. I came to preach. I just want somebody to help me out. Because if it's truly grace, nobody can earn it. So what makes me think that just because I get a few things right, that I'm good enough to be a recipient of what God has to offer in comparison to somebody else that I don't think fit my criteria. I want to know is everybody welcome to this grace? That's all I want to know. And I want to know who's the judge of it all. Is it the people that sit on the first five rows? Is it the leadership of the church? The pastor? Who? Who determines who gets in and who doesn't? Oh, everybody in your clique going to heaven? <laughs> and everybody over there ain't? I mean, is it sectioned off? The people on the south are good. The people on the east ain't? Like, what? what's the criteria? I, I just want to know because it's people who want to come. 
that don't feel like they can. Mm -hmm. because, because we make people think that the church is a place where good people come. The church is for good people. I know nobody in here has any flaws. Right? Y'all good? I've been, I've been doing this for quite some time and I've, I've run across some people that thought they were, that they were good. Why is there so much mess in churches talking about what somebody else is doing and has done and you just found a better way to hide your stuff? This is important. Grace is unmerited favor. God doing something for me that I don't deserve and that I don't, I can't pay for it. I don't have the resources to pay for it. But God does it anyway. Thank you, Lord. There are some people in this world, I call them underdogs. I like the underdogs. Underdogs are people that you kind of put in their own category. They just don't fit nothing. They just weirdos. Just different. They don't fit though. Those are the people that God is looking for. This leprous man didn't fit either. He didn't fit in society. Because if you had leper, uh, if, you, if you were a leper or you had leprosy, you couldn't be around general population. You couldn't be around people. You couldn't hug your family because the disease was contagious. And there were laws that were set against people with leprosy. A woman who was on her cycle was considered a leper for seven days or however long she was on her cycle. She couldn't touch a man, couldn't be around nobody because she was considered unclean. Mm -hmm. The woman with the issue of blood was considered a leprous woman. She had a blood flow for 12 long years. She couldn't touch nobody, couldn't hug nobody. That's why... She finally made up her mind that I'm going to press my way through this crowd just so I can touch the hem of his garment. She, can you imagine what was going through her mind as she finally made the decision? She committed to it and she says, I don't care if they stone me. I don't care if they kill me. I don't care who I touch. I just need to get to the hem of his garment. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take my chance. I'm going to take my chance. And I'm going to get to the hem of his garment. I'm going to touch the hem of his garment. And I don't care what happens. And because she took a chance. Mm -hmm. All those people who were gathered around Jesus. His disciples uh, were like, all these people gathered around you and you want to know who touched you? Uh -huh. Jesus said, no. Uh -uh, you don't get it. He said, this was a different touch. Yeah. Because somebody touched me and virtue left me and went to them. Ooh, that's powerful. Let me say it again. There were a lot of people touching Jesus' him. There were a lot of people with their hands on him. But Jesus said, somebody touched me. Uh -huh. That means somebody had a special need. Somebody really wanted what I had to offer. And not only did they want it, but they had the capacity to receive it. They had the capacity. Because you know how sometimes you asking God for stuff that you don't even have the capacity to receive? <laughs> Lord bless me. Okay, where where, where I'm putting? <laughs> Lord, you asking God for stuff that you... God says. Make next time, don't come praying asking me for nothing until you make room for it. Don't ask me for not one more blessing until you make room for what. You're asking for. You want a better walk with Jesus, but you don't even make time to even talk to me. How are we going to walk together if we don't even talk together? Right, right. Let me go. <laughs> How are we going to walk together if we don't talk together? 
asking for stuff that you really don't want. You're just in love with the idea of expecting it. <laughs> you know, somebody, I want a husband. Ooh, I want a husband. But are you really preparing for one? Okay. Hmm? Are you really preparing what, for what you're praying for? Because um, if you want a husband, then uh, you can't let your boyfriend be in the way. Y'all didn't hear me. Brothers, listen. <laughs> this dude has made it plain and clear. Or this sister. Because it goes both work, both ways. I think it's 50 50 now. I, I don't think it's a, the men. No, 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 no. These women be running gay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, so, but don't let something temporary get in the way mm -hmm. of longevity. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. mm -hmm. Don't let something temporary get in the way of longevity. Let me say it again for the people in the back of the church. <laughs> don't let something temporary get in the way of longevity. Some people want to play. But if you ain't on the playground, what you playing for? It takes two to play. And, and Lord have mercy. I can remember as a kid, if you don't want to ride bikes and play with us, then we're going to find us somebody who want to play. Amen. No, no, we got to be, no, no, we got to be after the same thing. If you want to play, go play. Don't stop nobody from being what they want to be. Just know what you want and aim for it. Put yourself in position. This leprous man, because it's somebody who's watching, who feels like a leper, unacceptable, outcast, just won't love like everybody else. They want God, they want a relationship. But you got the people who's been in the building. For 20 years telling them they ain't good enough. Notice I said in the building, not in God. They've been in the building for 20 years. And I'm and I, I always talking about what the young people doing. Ooh, these folk don't lost their mind. Yeah, yeah, these folk, ooh, they don't want, they don't want God. Not the God you call yourself, sir. They want the God that created heaven and earth. They want the God of the Bible, but not the one you present to them. You know, the anger God. The God that don't like nobody, don't accept nobody. The God that never extends grace to anybody. Nobody wants that God. That's your God. And that's why every single day, your face looks like you suck lemons for your occupation. I'm preaching. I'm on one this morning, y'all. I'm on one. That church your name say Pastor. I'm on one. I'm on one. I'm on one. I'm on one. I am on one. I just want everybody to be able to experience the God that I serve. The God that'll come to where you hustling at and say, listen, you ain't got to hustle. Let me love on you, son. Right. The God that will come to you when you're in the pit and say, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, God is with me. You know, the God that when you at the point of just throwing it all away, God shows up or sends an angel your way and say, listen, 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 listen. You don't have to go out like this. Yeah. yeah. Not the one that say. They must not know God. <laughs> they, can, they can't know God acting like that. As if just because I'm saved and I'm sanctified and I'm filled with the Holy Ghost that I can have bad moments. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We all have bad moments. And, and, and listen, and some of y'all listen, your pastor have bad moments too. I know you love him to death. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
But he have carnal moments. He have bad moments. He have moments where his household probably ain't like what you think it is. He argue in the house too. Yeah. 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 What? What? What do y'all? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't understand the mind frame of people. What? What do you think? Do you think preachers are superhuman? Yeah. That's why God called human beings to preach to human beings. Hello, somebody. Somebody who knows what the struggle is like. Yeah. And then when you come and you stand before the people of God, you're not talking about what somebody told you or what somebody texted you. You're talking about what you know to be true. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody said, Pastor, I still smoke. So. Pastor, I be fornicating. Pastor. Pastor, pastor. <laughs> I still hustle a little bit. Pastor. My mouth is foul. Ooh, I'm a cusser pastor. And I also, pastor, have a tendency to carry that switchblade. Pastor. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, pastor. Pastor, pastor. I got flaws, pastor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sometimes I gossip, pastor. I gossip. I be gossiping, pastor. Be gossiping. I've left church, pastor. I'm guilty of going to eat with people and talking about some of the folks who's in church, pastor. I'm guilty. <laughs> Guilty, Pastor. I'm guilty of going to churches just to destroy ministries, Lord. I'm, I'm, I'm guilty. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I did it, Lord, because I just didn't like the pastor. I didn't like how the ministry was going. I didn't like how everybody was getting props and getting passed on the back but me. And so you know what I did? I allowed the enemy to sow me as a seed of discord. And I went in, I, I, Pastor. But I, I'm saved, though. I just got in my feelings. Yeah, I didn't want nobody to sing the solos but me. And when they took my song and gave it to somebody else, and when somebody sat in my seat that Sunday, I got real mad because they wouldn't get up. They said, I sit there every Sunday, Pastor. Pastor, Pastor, Pastor. And they, they, they played me. They played me. They played me. I got issues. But even with all the stuff, that you said, there's still room at the cross for you. Yes. God knows you inside out. Yes, he do. And still, to this day, extends his grace to you. That person that you see at the red light holding that sign and you just don't think they you, they play too much. They out here holding the sign. They need to go to work. You don't know what they've been through. That's right. mm -hmm. You don't know their frame of mind. Mm -hmm. yes, yeah, you do have the people who do try to get over but you trying to figure out who is who is going to keep everybody from being blessed. Because God may put something on your heart in that moment and you will stumble if you're trying to figure out all the details. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Obedience is better. Yes. Yes. Let me give you a, a few lessons before we get out of here. There are several lessons to be learned from this man's situation. And one of the most important lessons is that it's okay to come to Jesus. I don't care who you are. I remember when we were on Tunnel Boulevard, somebody came to me and said, somebody smell like weed. <clears throat> somebody came to church smelling like weed, Pastor. <laughs> I don't know 
know what type of response they wanted from me. Yeah. <laughs> Pastor, people become the church high. Really? Their mind is so altered and altered so bad that they can think of what a church was and make it to the door. All right. Then I begin to think about it. I said, how does a person get faith? Does faith come by seeing? Does faith come by doing? Does faith come by any other way? And I, I thought about it. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. And so, no, I'm not an advocate. I'm not just saying, hey, if you're high, come to us and let us preach to you. No, I'm not saying it that way. But what I am saying is that if somebody showed up and I smell alcohol and I smell weed, <laughs> low, mid, loud, whatever. I'm glad God led you here. Amen. Let's start with that. Let, let's just start right there. Because you would not have been exposed to the message if you hadn't showed up for it. And, and I was also thinking, so what am I supposed to tell them? Don't ever come back here high again. And then, you know, I had to put the people who get high out. Okay? And then you got to put the drunkards out. Then you got to put the liars out. Then you got to put the gossipers out. Then you got to put the cheaters out. Then you got to put the, you got to put everybody out. And then guess what? None of us are going to be in the church. Somebody say, well, at least the pastor and the first family are going to be in there. They ain't going to be in there either. Everybody is, is out. You want to know why? Because everybody has imperfections that try to hide. And if you're always trying to hide your imperfections, you are not being your authentic self. And a lot of people say often, be real. People love screaming, be real. Woo! Lord have mercy. Now I want, you to, I want you to do something for me. I want you to turn to your neighbor and I want you to say, are you ready for real? Are you ready for real? <laughs> now, now, now listen, now tell them you don't really know me like you think you know me. Because none of us will be in church right now if God went down the road and started calling our stuff out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. That's it. We got Yeah. So the biggest lesson is I, I want you to know that you can come to God just like you are. You, you don't have to try to get it together before you come to him. Like you're preparing to go before the judge downtown. Some folks be wearing suits before the judge. You know you don't even wear suits. <laughs> you're trying to dress it up. He's still looking at your charges. He's like, this don't make sense. You got a person wearing a suit acting like this. Man, judge know that people be putting on, be stunting when they come to court. He's used to it. And the thing about God is that you don't have to stunt with him. Because even with your suit on, he still knows your charges. But even knowing your charges, he still chooses to love you. He loves you so much that he says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give my son as a ransom for you. 
I'm going to give my son as a true and living sacrifice. I'm going to give my son to pay the penalties for what I know you did. And I'm going to save you. And I'm going to love on you. And I'm going to revive you. Yeah, I'm going to resuscitate you. And I'm going to use you as a trophy of my grace. And I'm going to heal you of your leprosy. Not so that you can look down upon people with leprosy. But so that you will have a better understanding of people who are not there yet. Yeah. See, because listen, I'm going to say this and I'm going to get out of here. But I had other points, but I'm just going to stop. I have to just stop sometimes. God will allow you to go through it and bring you out of it. Not so that you can look at somebody else and, and act like you ain't been an ex something. Yeah. 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 Ooh, y'all been an ex something. Yeah. Everybody's been an ex something. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Internet land? <laughs> Social media land? Hey, we, we all. See, that's, that's why we're not going to come in here and have a conversation about what brother so-and-so is doing and sister so-and-so is doing because everybody has done something. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. And, and, and the thing that I have learned in this journey, because I used to want to save everybody. Lord, help me to save everybody. I'm going and knocking on everybody. Dog, do you want to get saved? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I also understand that sometimes Life walks you into salvation. God will allow you to go through what you're going through because it's leading you to the only door that's going to be left open. That's his door. Because let me tell you about people before I go. People want you at your best. They want all the benefits of the friendship. After you've gone through the storm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They disappear. Mm -hmm. When the wind starts blowing hard. And you yeah. get kind of rocky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You start going through some tough times. Yeah. You start having to call a few people to borrow. Uh, you know some meal. To, to make something. To cook something. You, get, you need a couple of eggs. You need sugar. Now you are born. Yeah. 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 Every time I turn around, they ask me for something. But you know, I ain't always been here. Uh, life just happened to me, and, and I got knocked off my square just a little bit. I'm in a struggle right now. Don't dog me when I'm in my struggle. Just, just try to walk with me until I can get back on my feet. And when I get back on my feet, I'll reimburse you everything that you've ever done for me. Don't count me out. Somebody type it in. Don't count me out. Yeah. 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 Because if you have ever counted me out, you couldn't know the God that I serve. Yeah. That's right. Don't count me out. Yeah. Yeah. Don't count me out. I don't care what it looks like. I walk by faith. Yeah. Some folks will come here. Ooh, the church isn't as big as it used to be. I don't care nothing about all that. Right. There are people who need what God is putting in me right now. Yeah. And I don't care where they at. But God is going to put them where they need to be. I don't worry about that. I walk by faith. I used to be like, ooh, numbers, numbers. And I don't care about no numbers. David got in trouble for counting people one time. Read your Bible. Count nobody. I'm here to do a service. I'm here to say what God told me to say. And whoever is here. Is supposed to be here. That's right. And whoever is not. Wasn't supposed to be. That's right. Amen. Amen. Listen. Grace is something that needs to be extended. To everybody you come in contact with. And as I said. In the beginning. And I made myself. A few notes this morning. Because I wanted to say something specific. Recipients of grace should be the biggest conduits of it. A conduit is like a pipe that flows, that things flow through. And so if you've been a recipient of grace, you should become a conduit that grace flows through to other people. 
And grace is no longer grace when you extend it only because you benefit from it. Grace is when you give it to people you know don't deserve it. And we all know a lot of people who don't deserve grace. Starting with us. Starting with us. But every single day, God is feeding us. Every single day, God is taking care of us. There's never been a day that you died. You're still alive. And it's only because of the grace of God. It's people who live far better than us and deserve so much more than us. Mm -hmm. But yet God still takes care of a little bitty old us. Yeah, thank you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yes. When you think about grace, think about how you can show it to the least of these. Mm -hmm. Don't ever think you're sitting high and sitting pretty. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Jesus told this, this man after he healed him from his leprosy, don't tell nobody what I just did for you. He was telling him, don't, don't, don't prop yourself up. Don't start trying to magnify. You were just a leper the other day. Don't tell nobody what I just did. You know what the man did? As soon as he left Jesus, he went on running, screaming. Running yeah. Telling everybody. Because you know when God has been good to you, sometimes you just can't. You know how once you start rocking up, trying my best not to, but good God Almighty, I can't keep it. Can't keep it to myself. Extend that grace. Because once you extend it to people who you think don't deserve it or people who don't deserve it, it change, grace is a life changer. Mm -hmm. yes. And we all need it. I, I don't know where I would be if it weren't for the grace of God. Mm -hmm. yeah. my, my little mind has gone through a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. But I'm still here clothed in my right mind. Mm -hmm. Not because I deserve it, yeah. but because his grace God. has been extended to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's no way that I would ever preach down on anybody or preach at anybody because God could be preaching at me right now. Yes. But you know what God is doing? Loving on me. Mm -hmm. The same thing that he's doing to each and every one of us. Loving on us. Yes. If you don't receive a hug from anybody else today, God has already hugged you. Amen. He's already reminded you that I love you. I know you're imperfect. I know you got imperfections. He says, but I still love you. Mm -hmm. And that's the message that needs to go around this world. That's the only message that's going to make a difference. God's grace. He loves you. And even though you come to him the way you are, he will not leave you the same way you met him. Change is inevitable. When you meet God, you're going to experience a lot of transitions. Amen? Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. So what I want to do, I want to extend an um, invitation because I believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by him. I stand on that. I believe that. And I also believe that tomorrow is not promised to us. I've preached way too many eulogies to think or to take life for granted. You can be here today and gone today. Some people say you can be here today and gone tomorrow, but that's a lot of time. You can be gone today. It's so much going on in this world. And we need to impact it while we can. We need to be advocates for God. Because a lot of people need what we have to offer. We're so busy trying to judge one another that we can't help one another. I don't like being around people like that. Who are you helping? That's what I want to know. And, and, and also, people, listen, get you some tough skin. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. Stop being so sensitive. Yeah. Yeah. People going to talk about you. Yeah. Can I remind you of that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're going to accomplish a lot of things, and some people are just not going to be happy for you. Mm -hmm. okay. Some of y'all are going to start businesses. Some of you are going to 
You're going to do a lot of great things in this life. And, and, and people are going to have a problem with it. So what does that mean? You're going to stop doing it because people talk about you? How many bills do people pay and they're talking about you? How many times they come and pray with you? They're not going to wish you, everybody's not going to wish you well. But you got to be okay with that. I can only imagine how my name has been drugged. But let me tell you something about PK. That stuff don't bother me. That stuff don't bother me. Now, my family start talking crazy. We got a problem. <laughs> That's a whole different ball game. Right. But outsiders, the Bible says, guard your heart. For from your heart flows rivers of living water. If you don't guard your heart and you let everything that people say and do affect you, then your river will dry up. And the water will stop flowing. You have nothing to offer because you have died. Because people, you care too much about what people say. Somebody say, well, I'm going to like that shirt he got on. It got flowers on it. But do you... Do you think, but let me tell you, but I'm just giving you a real example of something that somebody might say. Mm -hmm. Something that simple will send some people off the in the off a cliff. Mm -hmm. They're depressed now. Won't wear the shirt again because one person you don't even know don't like his shirt. You sensitive. You real sensitive. They really want the shirt for you. He's sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> But what are we going to do, Tab, you can stop this. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. And I want to say thank you to my social media family. Thank you all for coming on here. Uh, we love you all. And we're going to always make sure that you got a place in the sanctuary when we log on. And listen, we had never start without you. We love you all. But we're going to pray. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for every person. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done today, the transitions that have taken place in our mind and our spirit. We thank you for being a faithful God. We thank you for being a God who provides all of our needs according to your riches and glory. We pray not only for uh, the people who are literally here, but we pray also for our social media family. We pray that you would touch every person from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. You know exactly what they need, God. I pray that you would heal physical bodies. I pray that you would ease troubled minds today. I pray that somebody will be reminded that they are fearfully and wonderfully made. I pray, God, that you would have your way in our lives. We pray that you would begin to open doors that no man can shut, shut doors that no man can open. We pray that you will continue to lead and guide us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. We will continue to look to the hills from which comes our help, knowing our help comes from the Lord. We pray that you heal sickness. We pray for those who are in mental institutions. We pray for those incarcerated. We pray for those, God, who are just going through a rough time right now. We pray that you would just help them to find themselves, God. Help them to, uh, to discover the, the best version of who you call them to be. I pray, God, that you will forgive all of us of our sins because somewhere down the line we've sinned and we've come short of the glory of God. we missed the mark. We've said something we shouldn't have said, done something that we shouldn't have done. And, God, you saw it all. And we just ask for your forgiveness that you will cleanse us from all unrighteousness, God. We pray that you would just continue to move in this atmosphere. We pray that you would bless the Glory House Church, bless the pastor, bless the, uh, the, the members here, God, uh, for their heart. Just Provide everything that they need as well, God, according to your riches and glory. As we leave this place and never your presence, we pray that the grace of God and the sweet abiding communion of the Holy Spirit rest rule and abide with each of us. Now, henceforth and forevermore. Amen. 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 Also, those of you um, who want to give, you can cash out Inner Peace Church. You can uh, tab or put the link uh, in the comments. You can go there and give. Uh, however the Lord leads you to give. And we will see you all next Sunday. God bless you and may he keep you. Amen.